Hey there. Today I wanted to review something which I really do believe is going to change the way you do video conferencing. Now, during the last number of years, video conferencing has become so popular. I mean, I don't need to tell you that, but we have Zoom, we have Teams, we have Google Meet, and all of them are good, but sometimes they don't have everything that you need. And sometimes they may have what you need, but they also have a price tag that shows it. So when I was looking for a new video conferencing system for my English business coaching, I wanted to have the ability to do webinars, meaning that I would be the only person on screen and the participants, A, wouldn't be able to interrupt and B, wouldn't show up on the recordings because that was important for me. Because if I use a standard system, everybody's picture displays and some people might want that. So that was very important for me. Um, being able to record was also very important. And having a fixed URL for the actual um, sessions was really important as well. So it was not it was a URL that I could just pass out to people and give it to them when I wanted them to connect with me. What else was I looking for? Well, I wanted to have the ability to have a minimum of 12 people on the call with no time limits. Um, if I could have more, even better. And I came across Vivo Meeting. Now, before I get into the bones of Vivo Meeting, I want to show you the first thing that I loved about it. And this was the price. And they actually say, why pay more? So if we have a look here, their basic plan starts currently at just 250 a month. And you get webinar mode included. Now, if you go to somewhere like uh, Zoom, webinar mode is super, super expensive. So you get that for 250 a month you get up to 12 people and there's no limit on how many minutes you have. So you don't have a 40 minute limit or anything like that. Plus you also get breakout rooms, which is really, really interesting. So imagine you were doing a group session and you had 12 people, you could divide them up into two groups of six, or you could divide them up into six groups of two, if my mathematics is correct. Moving on, to their standard plan, it's just $8.90 a month. And you get all of this, but you get 50 participants. If you move into their plus plan, you also get all of the standard and video recording. So this is the plan that I started off on and then I went to pro because there were a couple of things in pro that I really liked. So $12.50 a month, let's say that's $150 a year, still cheaper than the competitors. And you get all of these extras as well, 100 participants. If you go to Pro, it's $17.99 a month. And you also get AI transcription. Now, transcription is really good because if you're doing a coaching session, if you're teaching, if you're lecturing, if you're having meetings, you can have the transcript automatically. Before this, I was using different tools to do all of these different things. If you pay yearly, you see you get an even better deal. So I mean, 183.50 for all of these features is a steal. Now, if you're not sold on this yet, let's go inside and see exactly how this works. Okay, so what you'll see, I, I've blanked out just some personal information here, but here you get the URL that you're always going to use and you just click on this little copy link and it copies. And then you will see any upcoming meetings that you have you will be able to see any previous meetings that you have. So if I go into view all upcoming meetings, I can see all of the upcoming meetings. And one of the things I like is that I have recurring meetings with clients. Then I can see all the past meetings. And what I can do is I can see that on some of them, I have actually got transcripts. So if I were to click here, I would go in and I would see the transcript, okay? But I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, later. So how easy is it to actually create a meeting? Well, if I go back to my home here, I can actually click on schedule. And I, it's very similar to Zoom. Actually, I forgot to tell you that this is all online as well. So you don't have to be worrying about downloading software, etc. So I can set up the meeting title, I can set up the time. So if I want, I can set it to repeat. And I can say it's every day, every week, every month. 
I can decide what time zone this is in, and I have it set to my time zone of Madrid. I can have the security settings, okay? Um, I can keep the same code all the time or use a random access code. I would use a random access code because then people can't just join your meeting by accident. Um, and then I can put in unique codes here as well. I can decide how this meeting is going to take place. Is it conversation collaboration mode, which means that all participants join the meeting unmuted? Is it classroom mode that they all join muted? Or is it the webinar mode? And looking at any of these will show me more about that particular mode. Now, if I decide to start a meeting, it will open up in the browser. And, and this is something that I like because it's browser based. So there's no problems with having to download software. It will just take a second to actually do the magic it has to. And there I am. Hello. Now, within a meeting, what I can do is I can change my camera if I want. I can end the meeting. I can decide to share my screen. OK, I can present files or media. So if I already have uploaded a document, I can actually share that as well. And I'll show you that. And with the plan that I'm on, I can share an additional camera. So what I could actually do is I could use my FaceTime camera. You'll see the behind the scenes now. And you will see that I can actually. Oh, my God, that's so different, isn't it? Hi over there. I could have two cameras. Now, this could be very good for uh, if you were recording, that you could have a two-camera view. Uh, but I want to I want to stop that. So let me just uh, stop that there. I have a shared whiteboard here, and one of the things that I like is when you save the whiteboard, it goes into the chat, and people can download those drawings if they so wish. Now let me just close that off. Um, I can start the recording. Now one of the things with the recording that you need to be aware of is that when you start the recording, it will take a couple of seconds in order for the recording to start. And it will actually show you on the top of the screen, start your recording, and then it will show you that you're recording. We have breakout rooms here. If I want to do breakout rooms, I can actually just decide how many people are here, and then I can move them into breakout rooms. I can do live streaming if I wish. At the moment, I don't want to do that. And then if I click on more, you will see that I have different things that I can do. I can change my settings. I can have the meeting details. I can always check my connection here. And I can actually change my background if I want. I don't use it since I already blur my background. Now, here on my screen, I can see my connection. I can pin myself so that I'm the only, uh, the, the main focus of the actual talk. I can raise my hand just like in the competitors. And I could actually mute myself as well. That's a lot that you can actually do. But I can also change the gallery view so that I could be here. And if I was presenting, you would see something here. Let's let's just present something. Start sharing. And I'll present files or media. And I can drag something from my computer or I can go to my content library. OK, so this is something that I was doing with a um, friend that uh, her child I was helping her with some English here. And you will see that I can share this document and I still appear here. Now, one recommendation that I would have is if you're sharing documents, it's better to upload them first because what can happen is when you share your screen, your video disappears and you just see the screen just to focus people in more. But what I like to do is I like to say I'm going to actually upload the file first so that I can still stay on screen there. And when I'm finished presenting, I just click Stop Presenting. I have my chat, as you do on all other systems, and then I can create polls as well if I wanted. So what's the number one thing that you need help on today? And I just create the poll here. When I'm finished, I say End Meeting for All, and I end that. Now, depending on the plan that you get, you can actually go to your drive, and you will see your recorded meetings. You will see your content library. You will see what you have shared during the calls as well, which is really useful because sometimes you share something and then you forget and you say, what was it that I shared? If I go into meetings here, again, I can see my past meetings. I can schedule meetings. I have a chat with my team if I have other hosts here. I have my list of contacts here so I can actually invite people to uh, meetings very, very quickly. Over here, I have my logo. So it's actually branded here with my logo. I've uploaded my little 
um, icon picture here as well. Going over to our settings, there's lots of settings here. I can go into settings and I can change my contact details, my time zone, the virtual backgrounds that I want to use, if I want to use a different background. So this should load up in a second and I might take this background here. Okay. Now the backgrounds are pretty good, but remember, like everything, if you have a green screen, it's probably going to be even better. Or I can just blur the background here. So that's even more blurred. In my meeting mode, I have the waiting room. This is what I like, because I, I do use other systems as well for just my uh, private one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I've set it up from, a, from about a year and a half ago, so I keep using that system for various reasons. But one of the things I don't like about that system, and I'm going to move my clients over, is there's no waiting room. So sometimes it's happened to me that I haven't had my headset on, the client hasn't arrived, and I've gone and done something else, and then I flick onto the screen, and they've been there for two or three minutes because I didn't hear them enter. So everybody goes into a waiting room. You actually have hold music as well. So while they're in the waiting room, they hear music. Now, one thing that I love is that you could upload a music file. So you could record maybe in an, uh, an advertisement and say, hey, you're waiting for Richard Butler. Richard Butler is blah, 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 blah. Make sure you book your next session today. And you could do something like that. So that is really, really handy. It can announce people's names when they come in and out and exit and entry chimes. Uh, you have dial-in numbers for the US as well, if you want that. Uh, you have pins, security, recording and live streaming. I haven't enabled it, but I could actually live stream to their portal or to YouTube itself. And then I have meeting invitations. I can actually SMS people as well. And you have calendar request invitations and you have email invitations. Now, this will automatically give you email notifications where it will actually remind people 15 minutes before, it'll send me a meeting summary and it will send me transcriptions as well after the meeting. Now, one of the other things I like is that it will send me a summary of the meeting and in that summary, if I just go to a meeting here, it will tell me how long I spoke for and how long the other, other participants spoke for. And if I click on any of these topics, it highlights where that topic was. Okay, there's 17 references to coaching, it says. It will also give me the overall tone using its AI. It tells me the tone of the meeting. It tells me the number of positive and negative sentences, any dates, names, and places that were actually mentioned. So if I want to go to Dublin, it tells me about Dublin. So this can be very handy so that you don't have to take notes when you're working with clients. And I find this really, really useful. Okay, so let's have a look at uploading a file to the content library here. So if I just go to content library, I can upload a new file and I can simply drag a file onto my computer. So let me just find a file here. and I'm gonna drag this PDF up here and that will upload. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into my meeting room. I'm gonna start an ad hoc meeting here, just, just like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to share the file. So now that we're back in the meeting room, and you see the, the, the heavy blur is on there, I can just go to present files and media. I go from my content library and I choose this file here and this comes up here and I can share that with my participants. And if I wanted to do it, I could actually just click here to go into the next page. What I prefer to do is I prefer to send the file to my clients so that they can use it um, and then I might just show it on screen as we're going through things, but they would have it printed out already. And let me just go back up to full screen. Overall, I think this is an extremely capable piece of software. It does everything that you need and more at a really reasonable price. If you're a coach, if you're a teacher, if you um, host meetings, this is the software that is going to really, really help you. And the support is top notch, I have to say. And really, you don't need anything else because as long as you have this tool, as long as you have an internet connection, and as long as you have 
an iPad or a, a tablet or even a mobile phone, because it's a mobile phone app, you can host meetings and people can connect. I give this one two thumbs up. Well done, guys.